Hi there. I want to talk to you briefly about the Radio Equipment Directive and the European Union's cyber security requirements. It's a topic I get asked about almost every day. Now, I would normally try and avoid putting a date on any kind of training video because you want the information to be timeless. But on this occasion, the requirements are moving so fast, I'm going to say that I'm talking to you now in June 2023, and this is the understanding at this time. So the Radio Equipment Directive has Article 3.3 D, E and F. D is relating to equipment which may connect directly or indirectly to the internet. E is for products that could use personal data, um, information about the person or could be used with children or childcare. And then F is equipment which is used for transactions, uh, financial uh, exchanges, things like that. So any types of radio equipment in scope of any one or two or three of those requirements are going to have some cyber security requirements when these things kick in. Now, the original plan was that this would happen in August 2024. There's now a delay to that. So the cyber security requirements will come in in August 2025. Part of the reason for that delay is the fact that the standards are taking quite a long time to write. Senelec are writing those standards, they're doing a good job, it's a thankless task and it's a difficult one. So where are we in the process? Well, the European Commission has created a list of here are the kind of test cases we want to think about. That was called a standardisation request. That was submitted to Senelec in, September, uh, in August 2022 and accepted by Senelec in September 2022. So therefore, we have the kind of framework of the sorts of tests that might be needed. And when I say tests, I really mean assessment. It doesn't necessarily mean a test is involved. So what kind of, how can we relate that to something that we might all understand? Let me try and use an analogy now. Imagine you had a house, and imagine the standardization request was, you must not let people break into your house and steal your valuables. That's the sort of level of detail we have at the moment. No instruction of how you must do it um, and no kind of limits or levels. So as a, a solution to that, one manufacturer might say, I'm going to build a huge wall around my garden with barbed wire on top. Another manufacturer might say, I'm going to fill my garden with armed guards and hungry dogs. Another manufacturer might say, I'm going to put door, uh, locks and bars on my doors and windows. And another manufacturer might say, I'm going to take all the valuables out of my house. They've all met the requirement. And then in the future, when the standard comes along, maybe the standard says you've got to have lock on your door and a hungry dog in your garden. Well, OK, so suddenly we've got manufacturers who'd all met the requirement, but not exactly matching the standard. So that's the sort of evolution process we're in. But another interesting thing to consider is we've got these test cases. So let's say it said you have to have a lock on your door. And so let's say you went to a test lab now and said, please test my door, can you break in? Well, the test lab's question should be, sure, how thoroughly do you want me to try? Do I, do I rattle the door handle and then I say, yeah, it seems to be locked? Or do you want me to spend two weeks with uh, key locks and a battering ram and a, a, a group of friends and we're throwing poison steaks at the hungry dogs? How thoroughly do you want me to assess? And those are the sorts of things that the manufacturer and the test lab doesn't know yet. A big challenge for the standards writing group is the fact that some of those houses might be full of sensitive data uh, and some of them might just have a, a toaster and a kettle in the kitchen. Uh, and yet a standard doesn't really allow for manufacturers to choose how thoroughly you should test. So from a cyber security point of view, there's supposed to be one solution where all types of product get attacked in the same way. But we know that not all products are the same, and so some products might carry much more sensitive data than others, and yet the standardization process doesn't allow the manufacturer to say, I don't want you to test my product too thoroughly because I think my product is low risk. And then, of course, finally, we still want to have products. You know, if these cybersecurity requirements become so onerous, that the testing and the assessment and the notified body review becomes so expensive that the cost of products goes up, well, 
that really could be a problem if you've got medical devices or um, automotive devices, uh, medical devices in particular, you don't want a situation where hospitals can't afford to buy the latest equipment because of the prohibitive cost of the cyber security. Even for us in the home, if we can't get access to uh, the latest TV, the latest tablets, watches, phones, um, being without all the latest technical gadget might be great for the, um, for the health and well-being of us as a society, but it's not a business model that capitalists favour. So everybody's keen for us to still be able to get our hands on these things. I work as a notified body to the Radio Equipment Directive. Here at Element, we're ready for the cybersecurity requirements. You won't see us listed on Nando list of notified bodies yet, but that doesn't mean we're not ready. It's just the fact that some countries are faster to get their notified bodies listed and some countries are a bit slower. So you'll see the notified bodies slowly getting listed, but don't worry, the notified body can't issue a valid legal certificate until August 2025 anyway, so there's time for the notified bodies to all get listed. Anyway, reach out to us if you have any questions about cybersecurity and we'd be happy to chat with you. Thanks.